heroism and strength and courage that followed the firefighters and the police officers and emergency personnel that ran toward that horror and lost their lives that day. It really impacted me, that, that whole thing. It changed my whole perspective on everything. It just started to turn my life toward serving them. And on my first trip to Iraq, I sat down next to John Vigiano. I'm sitting next to this guy with a cap on him, glasses, a t-shirt. He wasn't a star. I just said, I'm John. He said, I'm Gary. He had a button that he was wearing on his shirt. I said, who's that? Tell me about the button he had. And he said, those are my two sons. They were both killed on September 11th. John Vigiano was a captain in the New York City Fire Department. He lost two children on 9-11. At one time he said a lot of good came out of 9-11. And the Gary Sinise Foundation is a perfect example. He made a gigantic, gigantic impression on me. I said, have you ever been to a New York City firehouse? He said, no. So how about coming to my son's firehouse? And he did. So I was heavily engaged with the fire department in New York. Gary right away stepped up to help the fire family transport. I remember I did a watch ad in a magazine, and for that, they said they would donate $30,000. So I took that $30,000 and I put it into the Fire Family Transport Foundation, and they bought a van with it, and that became the first Lieutenant Dan van. After 9-11, the need became so great. Helping guys, helping families, whatever they need, a ride to the hospital, a ride to the doctor, just taking care of them. And when my foundation was created, I wanted to continue that support by creating our first responder outreach program where we can provide grants, we can provide equipment, we can provide vehicles. So I heard about the Garrison East Foundation and I sent an application and they were approved and we have at least two great rescue groups. We provided equipment to departments all around the country. For an organization to quickly say, we've got you, here's what you need. Somebody said, hey, there's a phone call from the Garrison's Foundation. They reached out to us. We built homes for police officers. We want to thank you for helping care for this brave American policeman. It's given me quite a bit of freedom. I didn't think I'd ever get back. It's important to me to always focus on our defenders, our defenders of our country, our defenders of our cities, the guys that will respond if something happens in your home or on the street, the emergency workers that show up if there's a car wreck to try to pull you out of that burning car, who will run into your house to try to save you. Look at where the smoke is coming from. Look at where the fire is yeah. coming from. I can't express how much gratitude I have for the Gary Sinise Foundation sponsoring the attendees at this weekend. These people are necessary to our society, for our society to function and for us to feel safe and protected. We had been hit by something we never thought would happen to us. You see it on TV, you don't see it in your hometown. And so there are ways that we as citizens, like we do with our military and veterans initiatives, that we can support those defenders of our cities, the people that respond in emergencies. We had a quick realization we didn't have enough rescue tools, so I applied for grants with the Gary Sinise Foundation and was awarded. Having been personally affected and personally involved with this kind of thing for so long, I felt called to put my hands on these needs and try to do something about it. Hallelujah. Girls hit you, hallelujah. Girls hit you, hallelujah.
sort of muttering and mumbling. I just was hearing that form of bold scent. It's a heavy little bit of gifts, so humble. But it's the point of the fact that they fuck me. That's a lot of problems that they clearly understand. Do you understand? Rats alone is back when he calls your name. It all fades to black when he sees your dreams. Please tell me straight.
concerts for the military and our first responders, the responders over the years. I think this is, this is 555 concerts that we played in the last 20 years. The band got started in 2003, and uh, I did a, there was a, right, do you remember when the, um, the statue in the square in Baghdad of Saddam Hussein was yanked down by a, by a tank, a U.S. Army tank just pulled that statue down? Well, that was in April of 2003, and in June of 2003, there was a big USO tour over to Iraq and Kuwait. And uh, Northwest Airlines gave us a 747 to take 180 people over on this tour. And Kid Rock was on the tour, and Leanne Womack was on the tour, and John Stamos, and Rebecca Stamos, and Brittany Murphy, and so many. Robert De Niro even showed up on that tour. He was wandering around over there. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders were on that tour. There were football players and basketball players and comedians, and there were a couple of lowly actors that were waving. <laughs> So I went as uh, Lieutenant Dan. And we, we went all over the place and we split up the groups and we went, we covered a lot of ground in Kuwait and Iraq on that trip in June of 2003. So that's 20 years ago. And on that tour, um, you know, I was so moved by it and so impassioned by it and saw the impact that just showing up and bringing a little bit of home can do for somebody. And I went back, about three weeks later, I went to, on another tour. I went to, to Italy. And then I went on another tour the next month. I went to Germany. And then I went to Walter Reed for the first time on September 11th, 2003. Bethesda and Walter Reed that same day after I had been to Fort Stewart in Georgia. The third ID was, were the ones that took the, the airport in Baghdad and we did a big show in there in this giant hangar in 2003. Kid Rock got up there and jammed. He played Sweet Home, Sweet Home Alabama and some other stuff. And I, I just wanted to keep doing it. So I went back to Iraq in November that year. You may ask if I was employed at that time. <laughs> no employment, but that's okay. It was all good. I had some great opportunities in the movie business, and I had a, a public platform that I could use to try to do some good to help some people out. Yeah. Having veterans in my own family, and my own side of the family, My wife has uh, two brothers who served in Vietnam. She's got a sister who served in the army. She married a Vietnam veteran, a combat medic. They had a son. He went to Afghanistan twice, served in the army. He's now a police officer in Nashville. He just made it to the academy in July. And so he's a police officer. And then on my side of the family, a lot of veterans. My dad served in the Navy. My Uncles served in World War II. One was a navigator on a, a navigator on a B-17 bomber over Europe. The other was a, on a ship in the Pacific. My grandfather served in World War I. He was an ambulance driver in, in France. So a lot of veterans in my family. And I, but you know, after September 11th, I started looking at it all kind of differently. I think I was teed up for something. Uh because of the veterans in my family and in the 80s supporting them and in the 90s when I played the Vietnam veteran and Forrest Gump. Oh, oh, some of you saw that, huh? Forrest Gump is gonna be 30 years, 30 year anniversary next year, that's crazy. Me too. 
Nat, playing Lieutenant Dan led me to uh, working with the DAV, Disabled American Veterans Organization. And from there I learned so much about what our wounded service members go through, and I think all those seeds, the family, the DAV, the Vietnam veteran stuff that I was involved in in the 80s, that was just teeing me up for a level of service that would happen on September 11, 2001, 22 years ago. And I write in my book, uh, I wrote a book called Grateful American, because I am. And in the book, the chapter, there's a chapter called Turning Point. And that's the September, September 11th chapter where I kind of recognized that something was happening to me and I, I needed to do something, you know? I mean, there's a lot of people that, that went through that. Our hearts were broken after that terrible day. Remember the fear that we all felt? The, just the, what is happening? You remember, just within, within days, we're, we're reading about anthrax going through the mail. And people dying from anthrax in the mail from nobody knew what was going on but we had leaders who stepped up and we had the men and women in uniform who stepped up to try to prevent that from happening again and to our afghanistan veterans out there Tough deal here, after 20 years, to hand Afghanistan back to the Taliban. But you should never, ever, ever feel that your service didn't matter and the sacrifices of your friends did not matter. For 20 years, you prevented another terrorist attack from being plotted and planned and executed. You gave freedom to women and girls who never knew freedom. There's a generation of Afghans that know freedom and maybe one day they'll fight for it again and they'll get it back. You provided that for them. You gave them a taste of freedom. Back in the early 50s, we went to Korea and we've been there ever since providing freedom, supporting the South Koreans, keeping their freedom secure. I've been to the border between North and South Korea. I've st stood there several times. The North Korean guards can walk right up to you. I can touch them because the border is just this little piece of concrete. And they can walk right up to you and stare you in the face. And the soldiers behind me, the South Korean soldiers, they are free. They have grown up in freedom. They know what freedom is. But this poor guy, staring at me, doesn't have a clue of what freedom is. Freedom is precious. It has to be fought for, it has to be protected, it has to be defended. And people sacrifice to do that. And we can never take their service for granted. The men and women in our cities, the men and women in uniform who run into buildings when they're burning, who grab somebody out of a burning car and try to save them, who get in a police car and drive around and just waiting for something to happen. These people are special. They deserve our love and our support and our gratitude every single day. They deserve our appreciation. So thank you to Sunbelt and everybody here for allowing us to come and show our appreciation for Erie, Pennsylvania and your first responders. God bless you and God bless America.
If tomorrow all the things were gone, I had worked for all my life, and I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today, because the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take that away. Across the plains of Texas, from now we see the shining sea.